Working together, FCM is putting forward a strong agenda for change. Municipalities are doing so much, but we all know that we can do more if we had the right tools. You heard lots of discussion this week about the need to modernize how the municipal order of government operates in Canada. It's a conversation that will continue. And I know that FCM can and does create real change. FCM has helped drive new investments in the gas tax fund, now called the Canada Community Building Fund. It helps municipalities of all sizes to offer better services and infrastructure without the typical rolls and rolls of red tape. It's FCM's advocacy that has seen that fund doubled on two occasions in recent years. It's millions upon millions of dollars across this country, small towns and big cities, to give us the tools we need to be successfully locally. We can thank FCM for that. This is the kind of support we will continue to reach for. Welcome to a special episode of the Cross-Border Interviews. At the recent Federation of Canadian Municipalities, AGM, Scott Pierce, the mayor of the Township of Gore, was elected as the new president of the organization. With a focus on addressing the needs of municipalities and fostering collaboration, Pierce aims to lead FCM towards a prosperous and inclusive future. Now, we had the pleasure to sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with Pierce to discuss his intentions to work closely with both federal, provincial, and territorial governments in order to develop a new fiscal framework for municipalities. Also, during our interview, Pierce will discuss how he sees his role as the mayor of a township in Quebec as bridging the gap for advocacy for both small communities and larger urban centers. We will also be discussing the three major issues that took center stage at the FCM AGM, the urgent need to establish an intergovernmental platform on mental health, the crisis of homelessness, and the development of a new growth framework for municipalities. Now let's get to our one-on-one -on -one interview with President Scott Pierce. So President Pierce, congratulations on your ascension to the uh position of president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Um, I want to start with the big question. What do you hope to accomplish within the next 12 months under your presidency of FCM? Well, I'd say, Chris, uh, thanks for having me. As always, um, my priority is the elected municipal people across the country. I think we have to shine a light on the work they do, the good work they do. Um, I don't know if you saw my first speech, but that, that's what it was all about. And, and I believe strongly in that. Um, we see people doing incredible things in their communities. Uh, they go above and beyond the call of duty. Unfortunately, every one in 1,000 uh, elected people may have what I call an ethical brain fart. And it makes us all look bad and no one gets more frustrated than, than us. But overwhelmingly, uh, municipal people will work very hard out of the limelight and all they care about is building better communities for the people they work for. And then you see it on the ground every day. And I want to shine a spotlight on them. I think they deserve more respect for the work they do. I've had the opportunity to meet hundreds and if not thousands of them across the country. I'm so very proud of the work that we do on the ground, out of the limelight, out of the spotlight, not in the media, but really with citizens locally and getting things done. So that's, that's, the first thing I want to focus on, obviously, there's the big ticket items, the homelessness and uh, affordability when it comes to housing, etc. But I think uh, we need to make sure that elected municipal people have the credibility they deserve because that'll help us moving forward when we have to negotiate big ticket items with the provincial and federal governments. Before we talk about the FCM conference and some of the uh, policies that were passed, I want to talk about your speech. And it was a, an off-the-cuff, I believe, off-the-cuff comment that you made, it, but it made me think. 
you talked about how municipal government is the government of proximity. And when you said that, it really resonated, resonated with me. What did you mean by that? And how do you see FCM playing a role in fostering the government of proximity, not just in Quebec where you are, but across this great country? Well, I mean, it's obvious to me. I, I, my example, every citizen in my community has my phone number, my cell. Most of the people in my region have my cell. Uh, that's proximity. That's where people have concerns. They have questions. You answer them. Um, you help where you can. What I always tell people is call me with a good idea, and if it's good, I'll steal it. I'll, I'll actually give you the, uh, the credit for it, but I'll use it if it helps our community. And I think most people across the country in municipal life, that's how they are. And we're the ones, like I say, on the ground. We're the experts on the ground. It's not some bureaucrat in Quebec City, part of our provincial government, that's going to tell me what I need to do on the ground because I see the needs every day. And I, I think that's part of the problem that we need to fix as, as FCM is, you know, these, these things happen, these, these um, weather events that, that hurt our communities, our infrastructure, they don't happen in, in Ottawa and the par on Parliament Hill. They happen in our communities. So I think the federal and provincial governments need to give us the respect we deserve on the ground. And I think in local communities, someone said to me the other day, and I laughed, that if the federal government closed down, people wouldn't notice for a month. But if your local municipality didn't pick up the garbage, wow, you'd get a phone call the same day. <laughs> so so we are the government of proximity. And, you know, the fact that the, the, the two other, I won't say higher levels, because uh, my opinion is that local governments are the highest level, but the two other levels of government are, are hogging the, the, the tax law. They, they get 45 cents out of the dollar. The municipalities get 10%, 10 cents, but we maintain 60% of the country's infrastructure. And we saw during COVID that on the ground, local communities were doing incredible things that helped their folks get through COVID. And that respect needs to be shown. And it needs to be shown by having us included in the discussions. And we need to have that national conversation about how to move forward because they just can't keep down responsibilities without the money necessary to take care of these responsibilities. One of the things that came out of the FCM conference uh, and what is one of the policies that was put forward was starting a new dialogue about around the fiscal framework that municipalities uh, deal with. Um, I, I just wrote, recently wrote a column about how municipalities rely so heavily on property taxes. And I think if I'm not mistaken, 49% of property taxes is just the base of what municipalities, everything else has to come from either grants or user fees or service fees. What type of conversation are you looking for the provinces and the federal government to enter into around that new fiscal policy, fiscal framework, I should say? Yeah, well, it's, 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 it, you know, the, the federal government's talking about having 500,000 new Canadians come into the country. And I think that's, a, that's a great thing. There's not a more welcoming country than Canada, but they're not going to parliament Hill. They're coming into our communities. So when these new folks come in, we're going to need that infrastructure. We may need bigger community centers. Uh, you know, the, the gap, we can run the gamut. It could be uh, firemen, fire equipment, uh, new roads, bridges. So, so it, it, I, I agree. It's a good thing to have uh, more new Canadians come in and take part in this wonderful country. But at the same time, there needs to be funding available for the municipalities. The other thing I'll say, and this has been a, an item that, FCMs work very hard on it, and Carol Saab, our, our CEO, uh, is just an incredible person. When they come out with these giant size programs at the federal level, a lot of the smaller municipalities across the country, they don't even apply because they don't have those in-house staffing uh, members. They don't have an architect or an engineer in their community uh, that works for the municipality. Some of them, they run on four or five employees. So when these big programs come out with billions and billions of dollars, they're nice announcements for the feds, but a lot of the small towns don't risk it because they have to go to an external source, maybe pay 200000 to build a project. And if they don't get the grant, that money is lost. That's tax dollars, money that they're gambling. So a lot of the small towns don't even try anymore. Uh, that's one of the things that is wonderful about what used to be the gas tax fund is now the Building Canadian Communities Fund because the money comes directly into the municipality. And as a government of proximity, we know the needs we have in our communities. So that should be doubled, if not quadrupled. I'd like to see it uh, expanded uh, by a large number because it does help every single community across the country. And 
otherwise what tends to happen and i see it in quebec a lot of the small towns you'll see stagnation because they're afraid to spend that money to try and get the grant so things don't move forward and you know we're seeing everything i mean right now in quebec we have 160 forest fires we went through flooding in the spring you know the, there's needs when it comes to building infrastructure that's more resilient in our communities uh, adapting the climate change uh, and, and in all these small towns uh, a lot of times they, they won't even apply and and, that, and you know it's been proven that for every dollar we spend in advance to protect our communities saves about 15 dollars down the road once you get hit with a flood like we did and you lose a road i had a one road a culvert a huge culvert wash out this spring my municipality's budget is six million to change that one culvert is a million oh. so you know and who does it go back on to? Well, it goes back onto my citizens and their municipal taxes. And, you know, so I, I, th that fiscal framework or the, the conversation around the growth framework, uh, we have to be at the table. Municipalities have to be there. And uh, I'm going to push on that for, well, every time I get a chance. <laughs> so Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Deputy Leader Melissa Lanceman from the Conservatives, uh, NDP Leader Jagmeet Singh and Elizabeth May, Green Party Leader, were all in attendance at the FCM conference. Uh, I know that uh, FCM board did sit down with Justin Trudeau and Melissa Lanceman. I'm not sure about the other two, but did you get a sense that the party leaders and the party representatives are willing to work with FCM and work on starting this conversation around a new fiscal framework? Uh, absolutely. I, I think at first, Mr. Trudeau seemed a little reticent. But when I mentioned what happens in the small towns, as I just said to you, I think it it, it sparked a, a light. Like he understood there was, it was a, it's a simple way to explain what's happening in the smaller communities. So he seemed very, very happy with our meeting. He seemed very positive about it. I think he, he understood our messaging. Uh, and I'll be honest, he was more than a gentleman. Uh, I know he's the prime minister, but he really took a lot of time to be with the folks at FCM. Uh, Melissa Lansman, yeah, there again, she was on board. Um, Mr. Singh was on board. And even Elizabeth May, she's always been a big fan of FCM, right? So she gets it. She knows what happens on the ground with the governments of proximity. So I'm very confident that the more we can have these conversations that we're going to find some solutions that at the end of the day, whether you're a provincial or federal or municipal, we all work for the same person in our community. So I think they understand the needs uh, that are growing more and more across the country. You you are a mayor of a small town in Quebec and a township of in Quebec. Um, do you see yourself as that bridge between the small communities, small municipalities, and the big cities? Because you you just spoke uh, there about how small towns aren't applying for these grants or aren't even feeling like they're being heard. Do you feel like you need to sort of advocate for the smaller towns in your role as president of FCM? And how do you balance that with the needs of midsize and even large urban that's, centers? That's, that's a great question. Um, obviously, I think the small towns have been suffering badly, but I know the big cities have some major issues and some big, big concerns. And I had a great meeting with the, the big city mayor caucus. Uh, it was very nice of them to, to have me there. And uh, as I told them, FCM will back our members, whether it's big or medium cities or small towns, we're going to back our members and we're going to fight hard. We're going to be respectful. Uh, we're going to be polite, but we're going to come with details. We're going to come with facts and figures and we're going to prove the point. So to me, the big cities are the heart of the country and the small towns are the lungs. And we need both to be healthy for us to be a successful country. That's what it comes down to. Because without, without the lungs, the heart's not going to beat. Without the heart, you're, <laughs> you're already dead. So, so I, we've got to keep both the heart and the lungs healthy. And, and to do that, we need to have this new, uh, these new discussions, a national discussion on how do we finance municipalities and the needs we have. One of the big takeaways that I took away from the FCM conference was the two priorities outside of the fiscal framework, which is mental health and homelessness. This is going to be a big priority for FCM heading into the next fiscal year, even the next five months, hypothetically. How do you see your role as president of helping uh, elevate those issues while also trying to elevate the topic of the fiscal framework, because uh, sometimes politicians at a higher level will only want to talk about one issue and only one issue. How do you see yourself being an advocate for the, all the issues, whether it be affordable housing, more housing, uh, mental health issues, which is so prominent across small urban and mid-sized communities? 
I think you're giving him too much credit when you say a higher <laughs> level. I say an equal level. Equal uh, level. Put- I apologize. Yes, equal level, Scott. Maybe maybe different, but equal. Um, well, you know, it's funny because it's funny. It was, it's funny, strange, not funny. Ha ha. But these issues are happening in rural Canada as well. I mean, the mental health issue is not a city issue. It's a Canadian issue. Uh, housing affordability is an issue everywhere. Uh, when COVID hit, my wife and I, at first, it was almost like a like a honeymoon. We had the house to ourselves. And once COVID hit, one after one, the kids kept calling, saying, can I come back home because they closed my school? Well, now, we're still stuck with six of them at home. So housing affordability for me is a big issue. And again, it's a rural issue, too. It's... Um, in my community before covid a regular little cottage uh, not necessarily on the lake but a nice little place was roughly one hundred sixty thousand dollars. they were selling in covid for over four hundred thousand. so the prices went up so high that a young family a young couple they just can't afford it right now i think the prices will go down but it's going to take time and uh sadly some of those people who were paid uh, they're going to be stuck with a big mortgage and maybe that house won't be worth that much anymore but these issues like i say these are pan-canadian and this isn't just big city this is everywhere the mental health issue we see it on the ground we've seen crimes that we've never seen before in our region here um so again and these are happening on the ground in our communities that's why we need to be involved in these discussions because we see it on, on the ground level and as you say the government of proximity is us my last question for you, Scott, before we wrap up here is what was your takeaway from FCM? Because you were talking to uh, municipal leaders from across Canada, I'm assuming from coast to coast to coast. What did you take away from that conference that we, we didn't get to see uh, via the YouTube links and via Twitter? But what did you take away from the conference? I think overall, we're all struggling when it comes to the fiscal framework. I think uh, whether you're a big city or a small town, a village, a hamlet, a a township, whatever it is, provinces and the federal government tend to download stuff onto us without the money that we need to actually get the job done. You know, it's like if you're in your job and people keep asking you to do more and more and you're nine to five, eventually you can't make ends meet. I mean, and, and... we need the, you know, it's, it's, you know, I don't want to seem crass, but when we talk tools, we're talking money. We, we can't lie about it, right? We, we can't just say, well, we need tools. We need legislation, obviously, that helps us. We need money that helps us get the job done on the ground. And as I said, we need to find a way to streamline some of these programs, these big national programs that, you know, they like to announce these billions and billions of dollars and half the municipalities don't know how to access that money. So we need to find a way to streamline that financing. That's why I say again that that the old gas tax or building Canadian communities fund, that's that's a godsend for communities of all sizes, whether you're Toronto or Gore. Uh, I that's the, I mean, we're all politicians. I, I don't like being called a politician. For this time, I'll, I'll say I guess I'm a politician, but it's one of the only things we'll all agree on. You get 100% of the mayors across Canada say, yeah, yeah, the building community tax tax, that's a good one. <laughs> I mean, it's, we can argue about the weather. We can argue about the fishing spots. But when it comes to the the Canada Building Fund, we all agree that's just it's a godsend to us. We know our needs. It's fast. It's easy. We send in all our bills. We prove that the money has been well spent. And I think the um, the federal government knows of, through the Green Municipal Fund, you know, that when you give money to municipalities, we make it work. We get the best bang for your buck. The more they invest in us, the more we can improve the lives of Canadians. And and like I say that. What I heard all week was the same thing is, is people in, in our communities across the country, they're not interested in being in the newspapers or on the news. They're just trying to get stuff done. And, and you know, I, I said that in my speech, like for me, when I run across my local hockey rink and I stop and I see a bunch of the kids and their parents playing hockey or skating, I know that's there because I made the effort to get it done for them. That's my reward. It's not about money. It's not about titles. It's really it's like you i guess you know at christmas time when you buy christmas presents for the ones you love when you see them open it and the smiles on their faces you feel good and most of the elected people across the country municipally that's all they care about it's it's not about anything else other than feeling good about what you've done to help people in your community i I guess you've never bought a a christmas present for a jewish husband before because that doesn't go over (laughs) yeah Uh, Scott, thank you so much for doing this. Hey, thanks for that, Chris. It's always a pleasure. And you know what? I want to thank you because 
you're one of the only journalists that I see that concentrates on municipalities and they don't get enough credit. Elected people in municipal life don't get enough credit. The only time they're in the news is when, like I said, someone has an ethical brain fart, but there's thousands of them across the country that do great work and you're the one highlighting that. So I want to thank you for that, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Scott, for sitting down and joining us for a special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. To our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and you won't want to miss them. Now, if you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us continue to grow and provide and produce more high-quality content like you saw today. Every little bit helps, and we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes below. Don't forget to also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for behind-the-scenes look, content updates, and so much more. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversation with the people in our lives even if it's just for five minutes. And I want to thank you again for tuning in for another special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Until next time, just keep talking.